and welcome to a special event of Lizzie Watches Yowie. I have decided to do a crossover episode with my dear podcaster Gaia from my horror podcast Beneath Your Skin. Say hello, Miss Gaia. <laughs> hello, people. Hey. I am so excited. Oh. Hey, <laughs> so basically, I adore this particular anime, and I count it as a shot and I very shippable kind of series, which is actually based on a Japanese light novel series rather than a manga. But why I decided to cross over it with our horror podcast is because obviously our horror podcast is all about demonic possession and exorcisms and their representation in cinema. So here we go. We are going to be doing the wonderful series, which is called Vatican Kiseki Chosaken. And uh, Vatican Kiseki Chosoken translates into Vatican Miracle Examiners. And it's basically about that kind of aspect of the Vatican and the church, still priests, that are called in to investigate so-called miracles to determine whether or not they are a true miracle or if actually it's just like humans like faking a miracle or people trying to get credit for stuff. And like, So is it truly, truly a miracle or is it a fakery or a forgery and this series is 12 episodes long it is gorgeously animated i think the animation is beautiful i adore the character designs the music is gorgeous the background art is a wonderfully put together series so if you haven't seen vatican miracle examiners rush out and go see it now before all the spoilers start appearing in the next 12 episodes because truly it is gorgeous so, our series starts of one night, the poor groundskeeper is walking around some grounds and he finds some kids doing a demonic mi ritual. And obviously this has been a bit of a, like an occurrence at this place because he's going, damn kids in the demon summoning game they play. And you can see these kids are wearing hoods. They're sitting around like the pentagram single chanting and they're chanting in German. So, they're, so I have no idea what they're saying, but it's in German and I don't speak German. And then they're like, oh, no, we've been caught. And obviously, so it's just Japanese and they they run off. And he's like, oh, my God, these kids at the academy. Like, why do they keep playing this game? And you're just like, whoa, what is going on in this school? That the demon summoning game is the new fad amongst these these you know, teenage boys, really. And we also find that the school is run and looked after by the church that shares its ground. So it's a like boarding school for young boys run by priests that also are part of the church of Rosaria. Rosaria, I could never pronounce it as well because well, my Japanese pronunciation is okay. When it comes to European words, I'm like, oh dear. So the church of Rosaria. And he's annoyed with these kids and he's, that he's decided he needs to finish off his rounds because he's chased off them. And he opens the doors to the church and there floating is this beautiful boy with like stigmata signs. And you're like, oh, my God. And he's like, oh, my God, it's a floating dead body. And you're like, oh, oh, yes, that is a floating dead body. Then comes the wonderfully gorgeous like opening sequence with beautiful shots of like flowing priest robes and doing exorcisms. And then we have the title of the first episode, which is called Through God's Sucker, My Eyes Are Opened. And I'm now going to defer to you, Gaia, if this is something, a quote from the Bible or something religious. Yes, it is. It's a quote from the Bible. And it means that only thanks to God's intervention, uh, you can see the truth. Okay. It's, it's what uh, the church was supposed to do when it was born because we have to remember catholic church and catholic religion are born in a time in which uh, paganism was uh, the main religion in the world because uh, before rome was as powerful as it became after a lot of time uh, there was greece greece was the center of the world actually and we know the Greek pantheon is uh, composed by 12 main gods and then all the minor gods and the demigods and heroes and everything that was related to the gods. But the main 12 were the, the pantheon, the what who created the world and who um, made the world go on. So after that there is a moment of transition in which Rome uh, takes the, the Greek pantheon, change their names, but they are basically the same gods. And then uh, Jesus Christ was born in Middle East. So 
side by side with the Hebrew religion, we had the, the beginning of Christianity. But when uh, Christianity uh, came to Rome, they were a minority and they were persecuted. Only God gives you the, the meaning of seeing the truth. And that's, that's true even for the exorcists nowadays, because only thanks to God's uh, benevolent uh, view, you can see if the person is really possessed or not. It's not something that you can do without God. So it's a double meaning of, uh, of this quote. Yeah. So it's a very apt title for an episode of this series. Ah, that's cool. Right. So we find out our title and then we're introduced to our two main protagonists. We have Father Roberto and Father Joseph. Now, Joseph is half Japanese. He's got a younger brother who is in a wheelchair. And clearly, like, Joseph has entered the church to try and find some kind of peace and some kind of meaning to his brother's illness who is suffering from bone cancer and he very much feels that he is being tested and but he's got to kind of stay true to his faith and that's the only way he's going to be able to find a way to help his younger brother we find out not very much about roberto in this episode his backstory comes later the only thing we know is that he also was raised in like a boarding school insert oh there's some angst and backstory there because you know this is still a sean and i kind of anime so we know there's got to be tragic angst for our boys to be beautiful and cry about at some point and then because obviously i don't know the religious aspects joseph starts talking about the story of job and i mean i was more like distracted by the fact that this is one of those series that's made for female viewers because it very much does the female gaze trope that you find in a lot of Yowie and Sean and I but also series targeting female audiences and obviously one of the only genres that do because like mostly that you get the male gaze and there's always the compulsory female shower scene but in these things there is also the compulsory male shower scene so you have to at least see one gorgeous guy naked in a shower and obviously he's having his epiphany like pretty much stark naked apart from a very low riding like towel that he comes out of the bathroom going ah oh, job and it's like yes you're telling me the story about job and how it's related to you but you're also gorgeous and in a towel <laughs> oh yeah uh, job is uh, one of the characters in the bible who were tasked with one of the hardest thing possible joseph is being tested with, the, with his little brother's illness, God probably wants to see if he has the same faith in him, in him that Job showed. Awesome. Right. So it continues. We find out more about these two's like Job. They are part of a kind of almost a secret order. It's all very like goes a bit spy mission with scanning of retinas and things and all these like priests on tech and it looks a little shadow hunters like at this point and they are finding out their first assignment and it's kind of like got this double layer to it so the case is there is a i was about to say nurse there is a <laughs> the case is there is a nun called sister dolores who has written to the vatican saying that she's had an immaculate conception and of course like that's a, a a worry because no one is meant to have immaculate conceptions unless they're like because you know christ has already been born and no one's meant to be like rebirthing christ into the world but if it is then it is a miracle and it could be a second coming so they need someone to go in and investigate to find out if this immaculate conception if this pregnant nun is the real deal but there's a hidden layer to this because really the head of the like vatican this order wants our two guys to go in and investigate the school because there have been reports of demonic summoning rituals something's something's not quite right is going down and they found this piece of evidence which they basically kind of call it like not a talisman but like it's some kind of symbol and Roberto explains it as it's the snake that represents the devil and it has the words rich written on it. So I was thinking it must be someone's name, but they were explaining it's from a phrase from the Bible about something glories and riches. And I think yeah, someone's uh, 
summoning demons to get glories and riches and this part of this talisman has been found basically uh, the glory is one of the main prayers in the catholic church this version is the upside down version of the glory prayer so uh, while the prayer is, is used to uh, worship god this uh, upside down version is used to call to summon satan's favors over the person who is telling the prayer so it's very bad it's not a good thing <laughs> okay. yeah I, I kind of thought of it as like okay in the original player it's like glory and riches to god so you're kind of like giving glory and riches to him but if you reverse it you are asking the devil for glory and riches which obviously it's... means you'll have to sacrifice something for that so they're glad that the sister has written to them because they want to go in and find out yeah what's going on with this weird tablet and this potentially demonic like possession stuff and demonic influence going on in the school so they fly to south america and i love this because it's one of those few series that take part in different locations so like it's like it's got the vatican setting and the vatican setting to me looks gorgeous i mean i don't know how realistic and well done it is compared to the normal vatican it's perfect I mean, I find more uh, similarities with the real Vatican in these uh, Japanese anime than in many American movies we watched. It was mind blowing. It was perfect. And I have to add just a little little thing. So uh, the one who gave them the case was the, the prefect of the order. And that tell us something very big. Uh, the prefect of the order is probably the prefect of the congregation of the Dro doctrine of the faith. That is just the modern name to indicate the, the, the Saint Inquisition. So both of them are dressed like Jesuits and both of them are part of the Inquisition. So yeah, it's true. It's true. That part is real. Oh. And the, the last prefect of the congregation we knew is the now Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. Oh goodness. They really did their homework on this series. I feel like yeah. it's really well researched. I mean, and I know Japan has an absolute love affair with Europe and Europe history, like mythology and culture. They always have done. That's why like so much of the early animes were always sent in France or during the French Revolution. And they've obviously like they started spilling out and being like it was a Victorian era that they got obsessed with England. And then the Catholic Church, there's a lot of fascination with religion in like Japanese anime. And I've seen a lot of the time, especially because they are not a Catholic country, like Catholic religion, Christianity is kind of treated as the thing that's wrong and alien and it's a reason why horror is getting into Japan. And so it's only through traditional beliefs in Buddhism and Shintoism they can drive out the evil, which is obviously like a part about colonialism and losing their like identity within like, well, the colonizers and like Britain a lot of the time because we came over during the Victorian era and brought that very stuffy like, yes, this is how you do things, which made Japan like fight back a bit so a lot of their media does not like show the church in a good light and here they seem to be kind of reverently just going like look at this history and this belief system and they're not saying that religion is evil they're not saying religion is like good but they're saying like well within this religion you, we have to take things seriously you have to investigate you have to prove all these wonderful things and also it's not showing us pedophile priests which is nice like it's like it's like oh okay so far we've got some nice handsome normal priests that want to investigate miracles and want to prove god's hand in the world which is you know quite nice really unfortunately the stuff that starts going down is less nice because they arrive at our church of rosario and things definitely seem a little like off kilter i mean first like we we got some of the major players now there's quite a lot of characters so i can't remember all of their names but i do remember like the first the head like one seems to be father klaus and he seems to be one of the, the major players in it. And he's like introduces himself to them and come and see us. At the same time, we see some teenage boys. And one of them is Mario, who turns out isn't dead. 
we see he was the beautiful floating boy from the beginning but his friend um, Carlos is like oh I bet they're here to see Mario and I'm like oh Oh, so he's floating and showing signs of the stigma. But this hasn't been mentioned in any of the correspondence yet. So you're kind of like, wait a minute, but they haven't mentioned the, the, mentioned the floating pretty boy. But yeah, so you've got that little like mystery going on. And they first they, the first thing they do when they arrive, which I thought was really touching, because normally in an investigation thing, the first thing you do is go to the investigation. The first thing is, first we've got to go pray. And like the first thing they do when they get to a new holy, like, center is they go and pray in this beautifully animated like stained glass windowed like church and they start saying how the stained glasses are all martyrs and i was like again i will refer to gaia because i was like is are these all true historical martyred figures yes they are and they called the big names because they named every single saint and martyr who is seen nowadays like the fathers and mothers of the Catholic Church. So they really called the big names. Oh, I was like, that's impressive. I just, I'm so impressed by how much research has gone into this. And we've like, you know, months of doing a horror podcast where we've got horror films where they're putting sigils in and, and using runes, but speaking. To, and it's like, no, you're mixing so many different things and you're getting none of it right. Or the one we watched where they were like, Lucifer, the dark spirit. And you're like, you can't even get Lucifer right. You don't even know your history of who Lucifer is. And yet, yet this like little known visual novel that got turned into a little known anime series has got its like history and knowledge down. So after they go and they look at the beautiful church, they also go and meet Sister Dolores. And Sister Dolores is so happy to see them. And then she starts like floating around. Okay, this is slightly like the anime magic. She's not really spinning in circles, but you know, anime has to make things look wonderful and flowing and extreme and stuff. And she goes, I knew you were coming, look! And we have more signs of the stigmata. And we're like, oh, not only have we got some immaculate conception, she's now also showing signs of the stigmata. And I'm just like, oh, goodness, things are, things are getting intense. So, yeah, Joseph and Roberto are like, OK, there's definitely something more going down here. We need to kind of like do some proper investigations. We get our first like, you know, the, the break in the middle scene. And just after it, we get this weird shot of a woman holding what could potentially be two babies, but we don't know. It's just something is swaddled and it's got four eyes and it's all darkness. So you just see black and four shiny eyes. And you're like, well, that's not good. But then it's quickly cut away to blood tests. And it's like, these guys are doing a proper investigation. And I like this. You find out a little bit more about what each of them brings to the table. So obviously Joseph is all into like the science, the technology. He brings a buttload of equipment and he's all like blood tests and statistics and emailing correspondence and sciencey stuff and uh roberto is our he likes the ancient text the history the ancient documents so he's our historical cultural ancient knowledge and it's like ah oh, it's a complete mixing of the modern and the old but without it being like a competition they've just blended this skill and it's like this is, this is one of the many reasons that proves that these boys are in love because you know they work so well together and then the typing up, I got a kick out of this because um, uh, Joseph was typing up in Italian. And I was like, oh, I bet Guy could read this. I was like, was the spelling good for like Italian? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It really was. It really was. And I was like, wow. <laughs> for a moment, I was like, why is he typing in English? Wait, he's not typing in English. He's typing in Italian. <laughs> So they start discussing the case and how there's like little bits aren't adding up. Like there's... We, they, they don't know the story matches because Dolores' story was the angel Gabriel turned up and said, well done, you are going to be the the mother of the next child of God. And she basically, that the angel turns up in a dream and now she is pregnant. And it turns out that she's 12 weeks pregnant, even though she hasn't actually been in the church for that long. So they're like, well, she could have got pregnant before the church, but her hymen is completely intact with no signs of like surgical, like reattachment. I don't know what the correct term for it is, but she hasn't had it re -zhuzhed. So it's like, oh, so medicine's on the side of saying that like, there's no way she could be pregnant, but still have a completely intact, non-scarred, perfect hymen. But they're still thinking there's something a little bit weird going on. 
and that they should really like, you know, they've got some investigating to do. But, you know, that's their job. We get another shot of mum and weird baby and we're like, okay, this yeah. is definitely coming into it. There is something, there is some kind of weird four-eyed baby out there. And you're like, hmm, why would there be a four-eyed baby? But obviously we're going to find out in a couple of episodes down the line. But for now, we're just like, this is a bit weird. We get our main priest go to dinner to meet all the other priests and the fathers. And they're all introducing themselves and having a nice, like, subtle dinner. Um... And they meet two new characters, Father Francesco, who seems to be a little suspect, a little bit heavy breathy, a little bit like, oh, I was just doing something. And Sister, oh, what's her name? I've lost her name. It's written down. Oh, And then we get Sister Dorothea. And Sister Dorothea looks a little sexualized for the average sister. For one, she's wearing some lipstick and some suggestive sausage eating. Like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, oh. This, this this nun is not a good girl because the minute Francesco comes in, she stabs the sausage and it's a proper like, oh, saliva, I'm going to down this. And you're like, oh, that is some angry suggestive sausage eating. And, you know, so it kind of looks like there's something, yeah, not quite right with her. I don't trust her. Our guys go back to do some more investigation and they find out the fact that the church seems to be making far more money than is normal for a church to be getting. Like, the church should not be making billions of, like, currency. Like, because it's just, it's just not. No one donates that much. No church has a job that would create that much money. So they definitely think there's something up. And Roberto thinks he can hear footsteps outside. And he's like, someone is out and about after hours. And then we see that Joseph has gone out to investigate. And there's a hooded figure. And the hooded figure is the same voice as his brother. And he's like, Ryota? Ryota, is that you? And Ryota's like, ha, 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 I can walk now, brother. Evil crackling. And it's like, oh, we're getting into dream sequence now. And poor, like, like Joseph is, like, immediately going, you are not my brother. Out comes the crucifix. It's time for some exorcisms. Then he wakes up from his nightmare. And he's like, okay, right. That was a nightmare. There, uh, th something as weird is like affecting me. I'm having the strange moments. I had a really weird moment of fear when some demon baby possibly was staring at me. I'm having weird dreams. And Roberto is like, don't worry, it's going to be okay. But then they are awoken from this moment from banging on the door. And oh my goodness, Father Klaus has been murdered. And he's been murdered in a pentagram. And apparently his head bashed in with a rock and everyone is like oh my goodness what is going on like oh no this is terrible the groundskeeper is like oh it's those demon summoning games again and he then he starts to let slip about mario but immediately shuts up and he's like oh yeah no sorry um, eh. and you're like oh oh they're hiding the floating mario incident they just want like the immaculate conception stuff sorted but they don't want these priests knowing about this demon summoning, like, and the fact that there's more than one person with, like, stigmata now. But obviously there's a dead body in a demon circle with his head brashed in. And, yeah, the church is being very overprotective about this. And you're like, and you're like okay, okay, bigger picture is coming in. So we have the funeral and the or a bit of a wake and there's all this beautiful choral music and the priests tell, the, like, the, the kids at school what's happened. And... Carlos seems to be freaking out and he's like what's Carlos doing now and he's freaking out and his friends are trying to get the priest's attention going Carlos is freaking out about something and the priest goes oh my god it's a miracle and a statue of the Holy Mary is weeping tears and that's when our credits roll and it's like ooh <laughs> And I've got to say, the credits are lovely because it's just like happy domestic bliss of our two main priests cooking dinner and eating dinner and talking theology and then sitting on the sofa, looking at the stars and discussing like what their thoughts on what have just happened. It was beautiful. And uh, I have to point out something. I know you are the expert of the anime and yaoi. So uh, I just speak like a student hoping to learn something from you. But Mario, Mario's character, it reminds me of Rosemary of uh, Kaze Tokino Uta. Do you remember the, the oh, head Oh, yes, the head boy with the ringlets. Yes, exactly. yes. He, he reminds me of him because they are such beautiful boys 
and they are like wrapped in mystery mm. because we don't know much about Rosemary and we still don't know much about Mario only that he has stigmata and he can fly basically yeah. or float float around but um, I want to point out something. Mario is uh, beautiful, like really beautiful. He's like an angel with long blonde hair when we see that all the other boys have short hair. And we think uh, it's mandatory in the school to have short heads, like is uh, very common in uh, colleges and abroad schools that remind us of a military school. But no, he doesn't follow that rule. He is just so beautiful. And at the beginning of the of this episode, when uh, the students are talking about the uh, Vatican priests coming, and one of them say they are probably here for uh, Mario because there is nothing more holy than Mario Lotte. And you are like, holy? What's holy in Mario? Who is Mario? Why is he so beautiful? Why is he allowed to have long hair when no one else has them? And yes, we want to know more about Mario, or at least I want to know more about Mario. <laughs> so look forward to the next couple of episodes. You'll find out more. I'm so glad you enjoyed this. I just think it's so beautiful and it's very on point for like both of the podcasts, really. But yeah, it's a, it's a good series. It's amazing. I'm already hooked up and I only watched one episode. So I can't wait for, for another one because this is really amazing. People, really, uh, listen to me. Go and watch this, uh, this anime because it's worth it. Beautiful. Anything else you've got to say, Miss Gaia? Anything else you want to discuss for the episode? No, I don't think so. Oh, amazing. Well, for now, this is me saying bye-bye and Gaia. Bye-bye. See you next time.